Hi everyone, my name is Makumba Gerard of Edima. In this video, we are going to look at the general iteration method or simple iteration formula. But before we go into that, subscribe to Edumath such that you can be notified of the new videos that we make every day. Don't forget to get a pen and a book near you and we get straight to the lesson. See you there. General iteration method or simple iteration formula. This is what we are going to look at today. This method is used to determine the root of a differentiable function fx equal to 0 by expressing fx equal to 0 into several functions of the form x is equal to g and considering 1 whose successive roots tend to converge. So we need to know what converging means here in numerical analysis and that is in our note here. What does it mean? Successive roots of, a, of the function will converge if and only if the derivative of this function express that the initial value should be less than a one of course this is magnitude otherwise the roots will diverge and the function which is under consideration will not be appropriate for finding the roots let's have a guiding question here so our guiding question is right here they want us to show that the iterative formula for solving this equation here can be written in two ways this and that then they want us to start with x naught being equal to 4 we need to deduce or make a conclusion about which of the two is a more suitable formula for solving the roots of this equation and then after after we have determined which equation is suitable or which formula is suitable then we shall have to go ahead and use the suitable one to find the root. So let's get started there. So we have been given uh, x squared minus 5x plus 2 equal to 0. Now they need to show that the iterative formula for solving this is written in two ways. So uh, these are the two ways here. So first of all, uh, I'm going to take away, I'm going to take 5x and 2, the other side of the equal signs, these two terms. So I will have x squared. So here the idea is you just look at the equation and see what you can take the other side and form or come up with what is needed of you. So x squared here is going to be equal to 5. 5x minus 2. Then if I happen to divide both sides by x, remember x squared is the same as x times x. x times x. We look at what we have and what is needed of us. This is 5x minus 2. So dividing both sides by x, we shall have to get 1x remaining here. And this will be uh, 5x minus 2 divided by we have divided both sides by x and now x is equal to, I'm going to distribute the numerator with this denominator here so I have 5x all over x minus 2 all over x so this gives us x being equal to 5 minus 2 all over x now this x here becomes a better approximation for us then this becomes the initial approximation so this is xn plus 1 giving us 5 minus uh, this here is 2 all over xn where n we know it n is equal to 0 1 2 3 and they continue that's the first formula the second formula they need us to show this so you look at it this equation here. There is a square here. That means uh, if I happen to make this x the subject, I will come up with something related to this formula. So let's get started and see. So there, uh, again, we shall, we are aiming at making this x the subject. That means I'm going to take 5x to the other side of the equal signs and I will remain with 
or I will have 5x being equal to x squared plus 2. Right after there, we are going to divide both sides by 5 and we shall have x being equal to x squared plus 2 divided by 5. The next step is we discretize it or we make this a better approximation then whatever x will be this side is going to be our initial approximation so there we shall have xn plus 1 giving us xn squared plus 2 divided by 5 where the smaller n is 0 1 2 and they continue. So these are the two formulas that we have come up with. We have now shown that this can be written in two ways, this way and that way. Now they want us to start starting with, you know, x not being equal to, or the initial approximation being equal to 4. They want us to deduce the more suitable formula first. They want us to deduce the more suitable formula. So uh, basing on what we have here as the introduction about the general iteration method. Here you can see that a function like x squared minus 5x plus 2 equal to 0 is of course a differentiable function. Okay? And we have expressed this in two ways that we are required of us. This way and this way. Okay. Now the next thing that we are going to do is to determine whether it converges or diverges. The converging function is the one which gives us the root or it is the appropriate one and like unlike the diverging one. So let's get into that. So for a converging function you can see that this uh this function here this is like x being equal to g again okay? so this can this is a function of x yeah this on the right hand side so for a converging function we say that the magnitude of g the derivative g of x expressed at x naught should be less than one that's for a converging function otherwise it diverges so let's start with uh, this so we say let uh, g of x here to be equal to this is x being equal to g of x and this is it so g of x is 5 minus 2 all over x now we need to get the derivative of this function here and then we express it at x naught which is given as 4 in our question there so uh, let's start differentiating we shall have to get g derivative x differentiating this function with respect to x differentiate 5 you differentiate these members you don't differentiate this this is a discretized function it is no longer continuous so this is the one which is continuous x is equal to 5 minus 2 over x so we have to differentiate this differentiating 5 with respect to x you get a 0 minus differentiating this x here so this is giving us negative 2 all over x squared now when you differentiate here this is what we are getting so uh, g derivative of x is equal to positive 2 divided by x squared so we evaluate it at x naught we shall have to get g derivative of 4 which is now equal to 2 all over 16 mm -hmm. i'm putting x naught here so uh, g derivative of 4 here and the magnitude is equal to 0 0.125 and this here is less than let's go and see the second formula we shall also say let g of x be equal to x squared plus 2 divided by 5 so let's go through the same process of getting the derivative here so g derivative of x is equal to we need to differentiate this this is going to give us 2 
all over 5 x the other one will be a constant next we are going to evaluate this at x naught which is equal to 4 so g derivative of 4 is going to give us 8 all over 5 so next we get the magnitude of g derivative evaluated at 4 this is going to give us 1.6 which is greater than one. So therefore, the most suitable, like the way they had required us to conclude or make a deduction, deduce the most suitable formula for solving the equation. So we are going to make that conclusion basing on this reasoning here. So the most suitable formula for solving the equation is xn plus 1 being equal to it is this one here 5 minus 2 all over xn so this is the most suitable formula for solving the equation given to us next now we have now known which one is the most suitable one they now say hence find the root two decimal places now we are going to use this very one here. Two decimal places, very important to know that. Two decimal places means we are going to use it to get the maximum possible error. So maximum possible error is now going to be a half times 10 power negative 2. And this gives us 0 0.005. This is the maximum possible error. So let's get into getting the root. So here we shall start with when n is equal to 0. When small n is equal to 0, put it here. We shall have x1 giving us 5 minus 2 all over x0. But what is x0? x0 was given to us in the question as 4. This here is our x0. So we are now going to substitute x1 is equal to 5 minus 2 all over 4 x1 is now equal to 4.5 before we proceed remember what we shall do next this is getting the error so the error is equal to the, mag the magnitude of 4.5 minus 4 so this gives us 0 0.5 which is greater than the maximum possible error so this tells us that we must continue now because the calculated error is very big compared to the error that is required of us in the degree of address so next we go to when n is equal to 1 put here 1 so we shall have to get x2 being equal to 5 minus 2 all over x1 so x2 is equal to 5 minus 2 divided by x1 which is 4.5 so when you compute very well on our beautiful calculator there we shall have to get 4.5556 this here to four decimal places again we get the error error is now equal to the magnitude of this 4.5556 minus x1 which is 4.5 so the error is there 0 0.0556 till it is greater than 0 0.005 meaning we should continue we go to when n is now equal to 2 when n is equal to 2 we shall have x3 being equal to 5 minus 2 all over x2 but x2 is here so we shall have x3 being equal to 5 minus 2 divided by x2 which is 4.5 5 x2 becomes 4.5 zero so let's see the error this is the exit theory error is gonna be 4.561 minus x2 which is 4.5556 and magnitude so when you compute on the calculator we shall have to get 0 0.0054 it is still greater than the maximum possible error yes because of this form so that means we should continue now we're going to just continue once because you can see we are almost reaching there let me do it from here so when 
n is equal to 3 we substitute 3 in the equation in the formula we shall have to get x4 being equal to 5 minus 2 divided by x3 x3 is right here so x4 is equal to 5 minus 2 divided by x3 which is 4.5610 x4 becomes 4.5615 again we look at the error the magnitude of now this 4.5615 minus this here 4.5610 and the magnitude so we get our error as being 0 0.0005 this here is less than 0 0.005 so therefore we now make a conclusion because they now needed us to get the the root so therefore the root to the equation therefore the root to the equation x squared minus 5x plus 2 equal to 0 is they needed this to two decimal places so i'm going to write x4 to two decimal places is 4.56 and this is where we stop to two decimal places so this here is one of the questions which involve iteration thank you very much for being patient up to this point now allow me to give you some two questions for your trial two questions that you are going to try out so our two questions are here this is the first one and this here is the second question let's try them out subscribe to edumath because we shall be availing videos of this nature don't forget to do our end of video exercises because they are very important they help you to concretize the knowledge that we have achieved here in the video don't forget again to recommend this channel to your friend who is a mathematician and can as well benefit from it thank you very much again and have a blessed time